Hey, welcome to another episode of Pusher TV. Today we're going to show you how to install our coolant reroute kit for the 2011 to 2019 Ford trucks with a 6.7 power stroke. If you're familiar with them at all, especially if you have an intake system, then you know about this hose assembly that kind of just lays on top of everything and really just doesn't look that good. So we have a way cleaner kit to replace this with this. This is a much cleaner setup. We have our coolant return hose from the heater core as well as our small diameter hose to go to the coolant bottle. So let's open up this hood and get started. So you can see all of our factory small diameter coolant return hoses here that really become an eyesore when you do an intake system like what we have here on this truck. You can see they route over from this, what I call coolant riser tube that goes down to the thermostat bridge and then all the way over to the heater core. And so basically we're gonna replace that entire assembly with two hoses. This is our heater core return assembly. It has our machined and anodized thermostat bridge adapter and it's stainless hold down bracket and it goes through our preformed hose over to a quick disconnect that goes to the heater core. So that basically replaces this stuff here, lays a lot lower on the valve cover, gets out of sight. And then we have our smaller diameter hose that's basically gonna route over here. And so you have nothing laying on top of your intake piping at all. And then nothing sticking up over here. It'll be all nice and low profile once it's installed. The first step of this install is to drain some of the coolant out of the system. Fortunately, we're working on you know, stuff on the higher section of the engine so we don't have to drain that much coolant. I like to put a little section of 3A heater hose on the uh, bottom of the petcock there just to make draining a lot cleaner. And then you just have to rotate your petcock about a full rotation. And then allow the coolant to drain down into a five gallon bucket. A way to get the coolant to drain faster is to pull the lid off your bottle. Again, we're working pretty high up on the motor. There's not a lot of coolant up here we need to drain, so you really only need to take out about two gallons or so. You can, you can take out as much as you want, but that just makes you know, the process go a little faster. All right, so we got our coolant uh, drained, shut the petcock off. Now we're ready to start removing hoses. I'm going to take this cold air off so you can better see what I'm working on. It's definitely optional and up to you whether you do it or not but I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of our way so that you guys have a good angle of view. So now you can see that coolant riser tube I was talking about a lot easier. It's got a mount here in front of the intake manifold flange and then another bolt here where it holds it to your thermostat bridge. So we can go ahead and pull this bolt out right here. We'll grab our ratchet. And then there's a quick disconnect 90, a lot like this guy here, where you just squeeze these two plastic tabs and pull it up. There's one there. You don't really have to remove that, but there's this exact same connection back here on the firewall. If you trace this hose back, it goes to your heater core. Go ahead and pull that out. You'll probably have a, a little bit of coolant left in your hoses and stuff, so don't be too worried if a little bit comes out. So that's that side. Then we're gonna come over to our smaller diameter lines here. We have this guy. We're gonna pull out with our body clip. Now we can go ahead and pull out your riser tube. You should have a little coolant behind there since it comes up so high. So don't worry if some comes out. And then you'll see how that little hold down there is on the tube our hold down is gonna go in the same exact spot. I'll show you that in a minute. So this small section of, or small diameter line here, we're gonna cut right here at this first bend. There's a lot of ways you can do that. I got a little PVC cutter here. Probably overkill, but it works. You 
can go ahead and pop the little hold downs off that line there. And pull our connection here off. You don't have to worry about saving clamps or anything. This thing comes with all new clamps. If you fling coolant everywhere like I just did, just make sure you wipe it up, keep your truck looking good. So we're going to start with our larger assembly first. We always give you a little more hose on this end than you need just in case you have something going on over there we're not aware of. I've trimmed that to length already, so we're just going to put our hose clamps in place and tighten them. And so. If you have your 90 there, like if you were to set this on, a, on the table, that's pretty much the orientation it's going to be on. We'll go ahead and tighten this guy too. And then as always, put some of our silicone spray on our O-rings just to help them slide in. They're a pretty tight fit being that they hold a good amount of pressure. So we're just going to feed this guy back in here to our heater core connection and snap it on. So you want to push it on there until you feel and hear that click and give it a good pull back. Make sure it's on there nice and tight. And this guy is just going to get inserted into the same hole that that riser tube came out of. We're going to line our bracket with the hole. Then we use the little bolt that came out of there. It's only an M6 bolt, so you don't need to go crazy on torquing it. And that's that. Now we're going to install our small diameter hose here. I've already gone ahead and tightened the splicer with the clamp. I'm going to put in our other little clamp here on the factory hose. Just push that in. I like to have my hose clamps aligned. And this guy's just going to route over here to our coolant bottle. Push that on. That pretty much wraps up like the hose install and all that. You can go ahead and clean up and pull these clips off your vacuum line here. And then I also tend to run the harness that goes to intake temp sensor up underneath the tube so you don't see it that well. Uh, and that's a lot cleaner there. And then all you have to do is put your cold air back on if you did that. And that's pretty much the gist of it. And then lastly, we're going to put our coolant back in the truck. You can just add all the coolant back in the system that came out. It might be kind of obvious to some of you guys, but everything that came out should go back in. It'll be a little higher than the max mark when you first put it in, but these trucks are really good at self-burping themselves. So you can just fill it all the way up. So that's a wrap. We're done with our install. The only thing left to do is let this thing get up to temp once and burp out any remaining air that's in the system. You can see how much cleaner this whole thing looks now without the hoses running everywhere. Our you know, large diameter hose is down here nice and close to the engine. Smaller stuff routes with all the other hoses over there. It's just so much better looking. There's a lot of other information on this setup on our site. Go check it out if you have questions. If you can't find what you're looking for there, give us a call, shoot us an email, and thanks for watching.